It didn't immediately click that my house would become an overnight sanctuary or that my family would be the only other members of the congregation. I knew I wouldn't be able to see my friends or when we'd be able to go out again, but I didn't anticipate how our amens would be unheard by the pastor whose pulpit was now confined to a 60-inch flat screen. How there were no ushers to usher us into his presence, so we had to do it on our own. And quickly, we learned that worship is more about the posture of your heart than it is your singing tone. And thank God there is no judgment within the comfort of our home. The kitchen where I toast bread became the place where I broke bread. Communion came from the contents of my pantry. And sometimes that was only saltines and bottled wine for this new church building. I had no excuse not to make it on time. It was a short trip from the top floor to the basement, from smoke machines to smoke detectors. The stage became a cream-colored carpet that gave my knees rug burns, yet still I forced my praise to adapt to this new church stage, and it made me wonder, how many of us would reject what we weren't used to now that church was a nationwide option on YouTube? with attendance fluctuating like the counted views, attentions cut short by the distractions we woke up to, our pillows and sheets convincing us to lay asleep for another five minutes out of his presence, but that was okay, because we could now rewind worship. Another 10 passed by, enough for us to ask, is this really worth it? 20 minutes later and now we're missing the sermon, but we're in a pandemic. Pretending like attending church online is the same as being present in person when it's not, and for a second, I thought, that just because we were apart meant God could not visit us in apartments, townhouses, or three-story homes. And it hit me that even in living rooms, God would still show up for dead souls. And I knew that I may not be able to turn to my neighbor, but I can still turn to my neighborhood. I don't have to be asked to serve the greater good. And though it covers my mouth, this mask does not stop me from speaking out. So in the meantime, I'm still called to be the church. I am preacher, greeter, media team, and worship leader all in one. I can adapt to whatever environment I'm placed in because like a tree planted by the water, I'm empowered by the sun. God created the church to be mobile and now it really is. One link can make the gospel go global even without physically being connected because the Great Commission was never on lockdown. And no curfew can keep the spirit of God from being poured out onto all of creation. So we are still called to preach to every corner of every nation. And when the world finally reopens at 100% capacity, and we no longer have to keep a six feet distance, I hope that church won't be Sundays or some days, but that we would be consistent that we would worship in our workplaces and pray for the people next to us, give an offering of time, talents, or talking, and actually be the hands and feet of Jesus. So let us not confuse the difference between the building and the body. Because even with blood instead of bricks and skin instead of cement, this temple is still considered a public place of worship.